in our chairs. And if you feel like you're getting tired, you can stand up and move around a little bit, okay? Omar, you need to get in? Well, come on, see me. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, so right here. There you go. All right. We got Omar in. Okay, guys. All right. So today we are going to be introducing our new high frequency words this week and our new spelling words this week. Yes, I, I am just a tiny bit, but it'll load up. It'll just be just a second, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to our high-frequency words. And I'm going to present my screen. All right, so on these, it almost looks the same as last week, um, but we have some new ones that we're going to be doing. So remember, you're going to keep yourself muted, and then those of us in the classroom will repeat after me to kind of help guide those that are at home. Okay, you ready? You don't see it? The bell, to make sure you're muted. Give me just a second, guys. I'm going to help another student. Make sure you don't touch your screen, okay? Don't touch the bottom of the pictures either. All right. We're going to go ahead and say these words. You ready? Yeah. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Beth. Beth. So I say it, then you. All right, Beth. Beth. Does. Does. Oh, I can't see it. In. At least saying she doesn't see it. Okay, so make sure we're all muted. Aaliyah said she, she doesn't so, Aaliyah, you can't see our screen. Okay, did you make sure not to press any pictures? There might be a thumbtack picture over your picture. Click on it and see if maybe that will help. Better? Okay. All right. That's it. So, oops, somebody else is in. All right. So here we are. We're ready. One, two, three. End. End. Job. Job. Left. Left. Men. Men. Um, more. Hey, teacher. Yes. Can you say happy birthday to my, uh, my mommy? Is she in the car with you right now? Yeah. That's so cool. Happy birthday, Mimi. <laughs> oh, thank you. Happy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, that was sweet, Roxton. All right. We're going to continue our high frequency. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, one, two, three again. More. More. See. See. Than. Than. Wash. Wash. Good job. All right, now we're going to say our spelling words. These are our new ones for this week. And so we're going to do the same thing as last week where Mrs. Holington is going to send these out to you today, not on Wednesday. I apologize for that. So today so that you have more time to study for it, okay? Mm-hmm. Yep, just like we did on Friday. All right, we're ready? Yes. 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 Job. Oh. Hug. Hug. Rest. Rest. Frog. Frog. Hum. hum. Left. Left. 
melt, melt. Plum. plum, shut. shut. Good job. I so those are plum. our spelling words. I'm sorry? I have plums at home. You do? So that's a good fruit. Plums are really good fruit. I love all right. So those are our high frequency words and our spelling words. So we'll be saying those every day when we start reading. That way it is already in your brain and you've already memorized them. That's how Mrs. Fullington works. I have to see the words and say it and then th then I can spell it right. It's a better way of doing it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so now... Uh, so now, so um, Harlow says that her brother does not like plums, and he says blah. So, <laughs> all right. So now, what we're gonna do is Mrs. Flinton's gonna share a story with you, and this story is a true story, even though it looks like it's a cartoon story. It's actually a true story, and it's called the William Oy story. And so we are going to talk about first some of the vocabulary words that you're going to be hearing or seeing um, in this story. So the first vocabulary, vocabulary word is scribbled. So remember when we scribbled, we scribbled all over the place, kind of like before we started with letters, we scribbled as little kids, as babies, right? Uh huh. Um, tryouts. Tryouts are usually for sports, right? We try out. Sometimes it's for clubs at school. So tryouts. Um, so that may give you a hint of what kind of story this might be. It's a sort of a sport story. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. There is wistfully, smirked, jammed, and discuss. So we are going to be talking about those words. So it's scram scribbled, tryouts, wistfully, smirked, jammed, and discuss. Discuss is to talk about. Jammed is probably something we kind of jam into. Like we have our pencil sometimes and we jam it into the pencil sharpener sometimes. Or smirked. Smirked is kind of like a smile. And you would that. Let's see. Mm. What we might do is log you out and log you back in. Make sure we have our picture on. There. Why is there two of you? Because your, your camera is facing me. All right. So now I'm going to switch my screen so that we can read the story together. You ready? So let's make sure, guys, that we're sitting up straight. Because if we slouch, we become really tired. Because I know Mrs. Fullington, if, if it's cold in here and I slouch a little bit, I, my eyes get tired. But if I sit up straight, I'm alert. So make sure that you're sitting up straight. So we're going to go ahead and start reading this William o Oy story. You ready? Thumbs up if you're ready. Yep. Awesome. All right. So we're going to go ahead. And switch my screen. All right. Give it just a second to load. All right. So what kind of story do you think this might be just based off of this picture? Does anybody know? So take a look at the uniform and the very corner. Maybe. They're, somebody said that they're wearing black. Let's see. Well, the person has his hand signals like he's saying something with his hands. What does that usually mean when somebody puts their hands out really fast like that? It's almost like an umpire. An umpire. An umpire is someone who tells you the rules, like someone is out or they're safe. Uh-huh. So what sport is that? 
Mm -hmm. So we're talking about baseball in this case. Baseball. So let's go ahead and read the story about William Moy. Someone else is going to read it. That's a good question. The, the William Hoy story, story, written by Nancy Chernin, pictures by Jess Tuya, read by Miss St. Germain. The William Hoy story, how a deaf baseball player changed the game. William scooped dust to dry the sweat off his slick rubber ball. He stared at the small X he had chalked on the barn wall. He closed his eyes. He opened them and threw. Bam! He hit the mark. He stepped back so he could try again. His mother waved her arms. She was applauding him. She touched her fingers to her mouth to signal eating. He read her lips as she said, dinner. William pulled out his pad and pencil. He scribbled, just a few more. I want to be perfect for tryouts. His mother nodded. His family was passing the mashed potatoes around the table when William pushed open the door. He read his father's lips, telling him to wash up for dinner. He also read what his father's lips mouthed to his mother. Baseball, his father said, shaking his head. It will never last. Still, William couldn't wait to try out at his school, the Ohio State School for the Deaf. At tryouts, he threw the ball, he caught it, he batted, he waited. Too small, the team captain said. William never got much taller than five foot five. He couldn't do anything about that. But maybe they'd give him another chance if he aimed better and ran faster. So every day after homework and chores, he practiced. One day, William was standing outside the cobbler shop where he fixed shoes, wistfully watching men play baseball in a far off field. A foul ball crashed by his feet. With his strong, sure arm, he threw the ball straight into an amazed player's waiting hand. Hey kid, the player called, wanna join us? But William couldn't read the player's lips from where he was, so he turned back to work. The man ran to William and tapped his back to get his attention. William whirled around, and this time, when the man repeated the question, he understood. He scrambled happily to the outfield. William threw the ball smack into his teammates' hands. When he was up at bat, he sent it soaring where no one could catch it. What's your name? asked one of the players. William Hoy, William wrote. The man looked at the piece of paper for a long time. He seemed to be thinking. Do you want to try out for our team? He asked William at last. William grinned. He sure did. William soon learned life in the hearing world wasn't easy. His parents, few people used sign language in the 1880s and certainly not in baseball. He won a spot on the first team he tried out for but the manager smirked when he offered William less money than he paid the others. I quit, William told him with his notebook. He quickly found another team. But even on his new team, some players talked behind his back so he wouldn't know what they were saying. Others hid their mouths so he couldn't read their lips. One day, a pitcher played the meanest trick of all. William let three pitches go by because he thought they were balls. He was too far to read the umpire's lips and didn't know they were actually strikes. He stood gripping his bat waiting for the next pitch, but the next pitch never came. William was confused. Suddenly, the pitcher burst out laughing. He pointed to the fans in the stand laughing too. William's face grew hot. He walked off quickly. He wasn't going to cry. Not about baseball, he told himself. He jammed his hands in his pockets. Paper crunched against his fist. He pulled out a letter from his mother. He read again how much she missed him. William missed his family too. 
He remembered how his mom would raise her arms to applaud him. That's it. William pulled out his pad and drew pictures. He scribbled words next to the pictures. He wrote, he wrote, he wrote. He ran to find the umpire. The umpire read William's notes. Yes, that could work, he said. The next time William was at bat, the umpire raised his right hand for a strike and his left for a ball. He used American Sign Language symbols for safe and out. This time, William got on base. He stole bases. He scored. In his first year in the majors, he led the National League in stolen bases. With his strong, sure arm, he became the first player to throw three base runners out at the plate in one game from the outfield. William taught his teammates to sign so they could discuss plays without the other team hearing. They loved it. The fans enjoyed learning signs too. In those days before speakers and giant screens, hearing the umpire's calls from the back of the bleachers was hard to do. Now even the farthest member of the crowd could see the signals. Teams begged for William. He played for several before signing with the Cincinnati Reds near his family's farm. William was so proud to show his parents that the boy who didn't make the school team was one of the most popular players in baseball. When William stepped up to the plate, shaking his bat over his shoulder, fans knew he'd hit or walk his way to first, then swiftly steal his way around the bases. Carefully watching the signals, he led the American League in walks in 1901. He was called the King of Center Field because for 10 years, he was ranked among the top five outfielders to get hitters out by catching hard to reach fly balls. After William became a star, he thought nothing could surprise him. Then one day he ran out onto the field Fans waved their arms from the stands just as his mother did when he was a boy. They waved their hats too. William said he'd never cry about baseball, but he did cry at the sight of deaf applause. All he'd wanted to do since he was a boy was find a way to play his favorite game. He never dreamed he'd change how the game was played, but he did, and we still cheer him today. So that was a really, really good story, guys, wasn't it? Guys, go ahead and sit, sit back up, guys. So what did we learn about William Moy? What was one major thing that we learned? Omar, I saw your hand first, and then Clinton, you can share after. Omar, go ahead and unmute yourself. What was one thing you learned about William Moy? So he went to play on baseball. With my mother, I was playing on baseball, but the team, like the like the ambulance, they they like they tricked us, but the ambulance, like he showed him with the paper, he scribbled on him and showed him, and he and that means he like he knows, cause her mom teached him. Oh, that's good. Thank you for sharing. All right, go ahead and mute yourself, Omar. All right, Clinton, what what did you learn about William Oy? He always wanted to play baseball when he was a kid, and he finally did get to change the whole entire game. He did, didn't he? Yeah, what was so important? What made him special? Um, what made him stand out and special about anybody else on the team? What did he have, what did he um, teach his friends to do? His idea. His idea, and what was his idea?
You remember? No. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Harla, do you remember what his really good idea was? What did he teach his friends? Remember, he couldn't hear, right? But he could see. So what did he teach him? Sign language. Sign language. Good job. He did teach him sign language. Now, at first, they didn't really treat him right, did they? And then they learned, you know, that that was something that he couldn't control and that there was something very um, unique about him. And they had to learn how to help him. And so William taught him, taught them how to um, do sign language. So there are like signals. So, so without using any words, there are signals. So I want you to do this signal with me. You ready? All right. So this one is thank you. That's the signal for thank you. So the, you didn't see it. So this is a signal for thank you. Thank you. So that is a signal for thank you for, for people who cannot say the word thank you. They use that signal. So isn't that fun? So you can also do this to your parents. Remember the sign language for I love you? Yeah, like that. That is a sign for I love you. So when you see it to your parents, you're like, I don't have to say it to you. I can just show you. So that is a sign language that also that people that cannot hear, they use that sign language to let their loved ones know that they love them. Sometimes when, when mm -hmm. my mom used to work, I did it. Uh-huh. Yep, a kiss goodbye. Yep, that's another one. So those are pretty cool, aren't they? So they also use signals now in baseball. So you see the umpire where they say safe like that or you're out. So those are signals that actually William Oy used for, you know, they, they made up for baseball. And now we use them today. Isn't that cool? No, he didn't. He couldn't hear. So when you can't hear, you can't pronounce your words correctly. And so for William, that was a really big challenge, and he struggled with that. So he used those signals. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Bella, do you mind opening the door for Mackenzie? Thank you. Oh, Clinton, did you have a question? Okay, what was that, sweetie? So how do you know how to talk silently? Um, that's a good question. I learned a little bit um, when I went to school. We, I had a friend who, um, whose mom could not speak. Um, like we could. And so we kind of taught, they kind of taught me how to do simple signs like that. That's a good question. Sebastian? My sister, she's like 15. She mm -hmm. knows like a lot of sign language. Uh huh. She knows how to like, like, she knows how to like. She, one time she said like, she did. Like she pointed at me. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you do you? Because I forgot. How do you I do think you I think you just like point to to the person. Like uh huh. How do you do R? R um that I don't know. That's a really good one. I don't know alphabets yet. I don't no, know like the the word R. Oh, the word R. I'm not sure, baby. I only know a little bit. Not not too much. Then she did A. I guess you just make the letter A with your fingers. I don't know. And then she mm -hmm. said the snake, and she did this. Oh. Kind of like a snake. oh, that's cool. I know um, my um, my my sister taught my niece, and she. And she, she taught her how to say more. So when you put your hand like this and you put this, she wanted more food. And that was the signal that she used for more food, please. And so you can teach little babies sign language too. 
All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead go ahead and mute yourself so that I can give you instructions on what um, you're going to do because there's actually two fun activities that I'm going to have you do. All right, so long. All right, so give me just a second. Yes. Yes, you are. You're good. All right. So um, go ahead and keep yourself muted, guys. So I'm going to show you in Seesaw what your two activities are. One's actually really fun. Um, so we have sight words, right, or high-frequency words. So one of the activities is I'm going to have you do is time yourself and see if you can say them as fast as you can while recording yourself. So what that helps you do, guys, is what it does is it helps you memorize those words. So when you read them really fast, that means you can read those words super fast. So when you see them in a book, you can say them really fast. So I'm going to show you the activity. But you got to make sure to pronounce the words correctly. You can't say like real super, super, super fast and then I can't understand you because I'm going to have to ask you to do it again. Okay, so the rule is to say and pronounce them correctly, but as fast as you can. So let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about. They have the list for you there, so I'll show you. That's a good question. She asked what were the 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 words, and I'm going to show you. All right. So right here. Under your activities tab, you're going to click that and you're going to find where it says it sees that different color words right here. It says reading Monday, August 24th, Fry word fluency 1 through 25. So it says here first, study the words on your list. Next, tap the microphone icon and read each word as quickly as you can. When you're done recording yourself, your last step is to tap the green check mark and to save it in your journal. So here's the list of words. It's the, of, and, a, to, in, is, you, that, it, he, was, for, on, are, as, with, his, they, I, at, be this have from so those are 25 words so you have to say those 25 words as fast as you can recording yourself but first you can practice before you record yourself so you can make sure you get them right okay all right so that is one activity in the second activity what i want you to do it's called, this one's really cool too. I liked this one. Mrs. Pelcher found this one. So what you do is, it says use the magnify magnifier to read the mystery word. So this little white thing right here is the magnifier. And it, and it reveals a secret word. You'll drag it to the gray circles. And you're going to find the short sounds O, U, and E. So right now they are invisible. So you cannot see them, but when you grab this magnifier, it reveals the word to you. So what you're going to do is you're going to press the T and you're going to type the word right here where it says write them here. And you're only going to write the words that have a short vowel of O, U, and E. So some of these are going to trick you. So it's kind of like a treasure hunt or a scavenger hunt by using the, the magnifier. So these are two fun ways that you're gonna be learning today in Seesaw. So when you're done, you're gonna press that green check mark, okay? All right, thumbs up if everybody understood the instructions. Yeah, all right. So go ahead, guys. You may log out of this meeting and I will see you tomorrow, okay? Have fun, guys, recording yourselves. Miss Wellington? Yes. What are you supposed to do on this one again? The mystery one? All right. So you're going to find words that are short O, U, and E vowel sounds. But they, are, they don't reveal themselves to you. What you're going to have to do is find it 
with the magnifying glass. So the magnifying glass looks just like this, Braxton, right here. This white little circle is the magnifying glass. And it is going to show you in these gray circles what the words are. But some of these words are going to trick you. So you need to find only the short vowel O, U, and E, okay? And then you're going to write them down or type them down in this section right here where it says write them here. This is where you're going to write the words that you found, okay? Did you understand that, Braxton? All right. All right, Clint, I see your hand, sweetie. So did you have a question? Go ahead. We're going to get on later and tomorrow. Today. These two are for today. Okay. okay. No, so no more for today. No more meaning for today. Okay. okay. All right, sweetie. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? Bella, I can get to you in just a second, sweetie. Jorge, did you have any questions? No. All right, sweetie. You can log out and do those two activities for me today, okay? Okay. All right, see you later, sweetie. Bye. Bye. One second, baby. All right, Bella, you can go ahead and um, end the meeting, and I'll come help you, okay? I just noticed.